One of the most difficult challenges in Terraria is defeating the game in hardcore. Almost exactly a year ago, I beat hardcore for the very first time and officially earned the title of being a veteran. I swore I would never return to hardcore after that and was quite content with that, but the thing is, I only beat hardcore in expert mode, and I always wondered if I could beat the game in hardcore master mode as well. And well, somebody got me back into hardcore, but I can't say anything about that right now, that video will come out another time. <laughs> but after being exposed to the high adrenaline, heart pumping nature of hardcore again, I thought to myself that I'd give that master mode hardcore run a try. But I wasn't content with doing the same old thing. No, that'd be too simple. But instead, I'm splitting the adventure up. If you've watched my One Year One World series before, then you're already pretty familiar with where this is going. But for those who are less familiar, for this hardcore run, each stage of progression will be locked behind 10 hour markers. So for the first 10 hours, I am only allowed to defeat King Slime and the Eye of Cthulhu. Otherwise, I can make no other form of progression. In some ways, this is helpful, forcing me to slow down and do the proper preparations during each phase of the game. But these large chunks of time will also open the door open wide for events to spawn and for silly mistakes to occur. It's a bit of a double-edged sword, and I'm really sweating the pirate invasion as I've never had them spawn in a hardcore run before, but this system basically guarantees it. But we don't have to worry about that now. These are the first 10 hours of 100 hours in Master Mode Hardcore. My objective with starting this challenge was also to allow for mistakes and failures. For all I know, I'll end up making several seasons of this whole concept, or else I'll beat it first try, I don't know. But my first hardcore run spoiled the ending and the title, so I figured this time I'd make a video whether or not I succeeded. Partially because it'd be a lot of time to put in just to not get any videos out of it, but also because I think it's more fun when failure is in fact an option. Maybe I'll never complete this challenge, I don't know. I do, however, need to get past the first 10 minutes in order for this to qualify in, in a whole run. And in the very first of my attempts, I ended up in a cave where I literally didn't encounter a single chest, got no recall potions from pots, and was attacked by three worms at the same time. No way of escaping, no weapons, no nothing, and three worms. It didn't turn out very well. So onto the run where I did survive the first 10 minutes. The first thing I took care of when joining the world was making wooden armor and three NPC houses. Slime scare me too much when I'm this weak, so having the merchant arrive and sell torches would be a big help. It also just so happened to be a windy day, and there were dandelions trying to kill me near spawn. I don't know the first thing about trying to kill these things. They always spawn at a time when they're not a threat. Are they dangerous this early in the game? I, I haven't a clue, and this isn't the run to find out. <laughs> Slimes, of course, were spawning, and Asher was being a classic guide. Guide, why do you let a bunch of slimes into the house? Why do you do this? Why? He was killed immediately after, which is well-deserved. Houses in place, I went to the left where several living trees were awaiting me. Maybe I'll get a finch staff, but even if not, these things are great for getting started supplies. They're almost necessary, in my opinion, for getting a quick start in hardcore. Sure, you can survive without them, but they give such a boost. Plus, the living loom and the more useless accessories are at least worth some money, which I can use to buy torches from the merchant or maybe some other things. There was no finch staff, and further to the left is the desert. There were hardly any cactuses, which sucks. Cactus armor is great for its thorn set bonus, but I did decide to chop the palm trees. I never make wooden armor in any of my runs because it feels like a waste, but for some reason, I was curious as to whether the palm wood would make slightly better armor or a better bow than the normal wooden one. A little further down was cactus, as well as several vultures I had to deal with. A little section of forest made me think I was onto the next biome, but second desert was awaiting my arrival. I still needed more cactus, so I figured I'd give it a try. Hmm. The zombies are here. Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> I thought he would jump! That was me. Misunderstanding how the enemy's AI works. Guess I'll leave abusing that to Wild LMAO. I had enough cactus for armor, and a palm bow isn't really any better than a wooden normal one, assuming they were on the same uh, playing field, but as it would turn out, the wooden bow I'd already made was frenzying, giving it a minus 25% damage debuff, so literally any other bow would probably be better than that one, so I'm going to be a very special little boy using a palm bow. 
The next step in any Terraria journey is to head deep into the mines, and a naturally generated cave just on the right side of the world made this super easy, barely an inconvenience. There wasn't much in the initial cave, and I was worried it was a dud of a cave, but after some quick mining, I found where it continued and came across my first heart crystal. Soon after came the second and a golden treasure chest with Hermes boots and a gravitation potion. As you could have likely seen, there was a glowing mushroom next door. These are always so great to find as they often have a lot of treasure, but I feel like it's a 50-50 shot. You get ones that have all kinds of loots and then ones that have absolutely nothing. This one would fall into that second category. <laughs> there were so many enemies around that I ended up making a platform bridge at the top of the thing and mined a little bit. This allowed the enemies to despawn, and so I mined through the first layer into the lower one, which did at least have one treasure chest for me, but a giant Shelly was also awaiting me. Hey, you too close. Goodbye. I had gathered enough materials to craft a regular hook, a tungsten bow, a platinum short sword of all things, and full iron armor. I don't remember the last time I made an ore short sword. Who even does that? They're not bad by any means, but they're not exactly the best either. A better sword would be the Star Fury, and well, remember how I got that gravitation potion earlier? Well, it's time to check out the skies. Please give me a floating highland. Please. Pretty, pretty, please. There we are. Oh, Harpy. Oh. And of course, the first one I find is a stupid lake. Getting one Sky Lake sucked. Another. You're kidding. You are. It's so lame! But I did end up finding two more Sky Islands, and those islands had a shiny red balloon and a celestial magnet. Neither of these were what I was looking for. Sure, a shiny red balloon is great and all, but a lucky horseshoe and a star fury would have been wonderful, or better, or whatever. <laughs> but thankfully, I did have more potion left, which was enough to collect yet another shiny red balloon, and thankfully, a lucky horseshoe. I had less than a minute left of the second potion, and yet I used some of that precious time to scope out a desert for a desert pyramid. There wasn't one, unfortunately, but a sky island just so happened to be right above the desert and it had the star fury, so now I got everything space has to offer me. Back at home, the traveling merchant had stopped by, and I wish I had managed to collect more money up to this point. What you got? You got a blue chicken- oh, you got my fedora? I want a blue chicken egg. There's no way I can afford it. And now this is the part of the game I wonder where to explore next, as I've checked out most of the main cave, if not all of it. That's when I checked the map and saw something totally unexpected. I could explore the surface some more. There, oh, there's more desert. What if, what if, what if, what if? <gasps> there's a desert! Oh my god, I almost missed it! Oh! That changes everything. Why did it generate so weirdly? Or why why can I see this? Like where'd that light come from? I'm I probably would never have noticed it. There it is. What is it going to give me? Deserts or sandstorm in a bottle. The sandstorm in a bottle is the single best double jump accessory in the game, if I'm not mistaken. My last hardcore run had a pyramid as well, but it had the vanity set, which could be shimmered into the sandstorm in a bottle and a magic carpet. That would have been nice, but I'll gladly just take the bottle. At least now I don't have to find the shimmer before I can get the better accessories. A little further down and I finally found the crimson. There is a cave in the middle of it, which I've seen before, but they never go anywhere. At least, they don't usually do, because this one actually is a normal cave, like what you'd find in the forest, and it carved its way through the crimson caverns, leaving a crimson heart totally exposed. I just can't break it because the goblin army is locked behind hours 10 through 20, and breaking the heart will cause them to spawn in short order. Further down was another glowing mushroom with a water chest. Unfortunately, it didn't have any water walking boots, but while I was distracted, with that, a piranha nearly ended the run. These things do stupid damage. One or optimistically two more hits, and I would have been done for. I rode the minecart track that was there, and it's the single smallest minecart track I've seen in a large world, but it brings me into the tundra, and it's not great. But flinxes are spawning, and an early game flink staff would be quite valuable. Getting all that over there would be good. I think this flinx would be good. 
No, 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 no. Ho, ho, ho. They do so much more damage than I thought they did. A little further down, there was a lost girl, or nymph, and this may very well be the earliest I've ever seen one of these things. They are stupidly strong for where they are, but a stack of throwing knives and a nice little perch were enough to take her out. Oh, wait, warding metal detector. Hold up. Yeah, thank you. That's great, and when I whipped out a torch, I spotted a nearby chest. Blizzard! <laughs> oh, we're set. I now have two of the best double jump accessories, and I haven't even found the cloud in the bottle. You know, the one that most people find first. <laughs> I continue to explore the tundra, grabbing whatever I could and found a snowball launcher, which is a great ranged weapon at the stage, and then continued down the minecart track that had brought me there. Oh, 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 did... Oh! Ah! Ah! Of all things, of all things, I wouldn't have expected one of those to be... Ah! I actually hadn't picked up any snow in the tundra, so I went to collect some to make snowballs for the cannon, and I figured I'd see once beyond the tundra where I found the perfect example of why you look before you leap. Oh, ha, ha, oh. And if you've been enjoying this video, do be sure to subscribe. At the end of the year, I'll be firing one mini nuke 2 out of this rocket launcher in an attempt to destroy an entire small world. So if you want to help me as well as support more long journeys like this, be sure to subscribe. I returned to the caves where an evil presence started watching me, but I don't have too much health and have no arena set up, and thus I am not ready for the battle. This is actually when it occurred to me that the eye could still be a problem. If something came close to killing me underground, I could be forced to teleport home to escape, but now if I did that, I'd presumably be at low health as the boss spawns in. That would be less than ideal, so I gotta play things ultra safely. It's just a good thing I had the forethought to craft a watch before coming down here so I can see when it turns to morning. I came across a flare gun, and those are actually great and hardcore. I found the water walking boots I was after, and then I crafted a diamond hook and full platinum armor. If I wanted, now I would be strong enough to take down the eye, but it's day, so I figured I'd craft a few houses, and that might have been a mistake as when night rolled around, the evil presence started watching me again. I frantically crafted some platforms and set up a rudimentary arena just before the ice spawned in. That went quite smoothly, and I'm still amazed how a few potions can make even Master Mode Aya Cthulhu a bit of a pushover. The zombies that had spawned were honestly a greater threat during the fight. Anyways, I still hadn't checked out the rest of the surface, and on the right side of the world, there were even more living trees. Still no fledgling staff, but now that I've crafted the flink staff, I suppose there's no need. At least these trees still have plenty of useful supplies, including an aglet. Now with all these supplies, it's finally time to get organized. I ended up making a storage system similar to the one from my One Year One World series, although I'm not sure why I put these houses underground and the treasure on the second floor. It makes no sense to me, but I guess that's just how it's going to be. The garden was even started in the ground beneath the NPCs, as well as on top of the house. Potions are obviously a vital part of any hardcore run, and now I got plants on the ceiling and in the basement. My base is confused, and so am I, but at least there were night crawlers all over the place that night, so I got plenty of quality bait for fishing. With my house in order, I decided it was time to brave the jungle. In this phase of progression, a boomstick is the only way I could get the arms dealer to spawn. The blade of grass is also my favorite pre-hard mode weapon. It's just, the jungle is dangerous? And the first ivy chest I found was real disappointing. Oh, the single worst thing I could have asked for. That sucks. I did find myself quite satisfied with the snowball cannon as my ranged weapon for the time being, and I used the flare gun for the first time in what feels like absolutely forever. And even after exploring for what felt like forever, I didn't find any more ivy chests, but I did gather enough materials to get the blade of grass. 
Before returning to the jungle, I set up housing for a desert pylon and the first chest I then found in the jungle was a cloud in the bottle, at which point it suddenly dawned on me. I am now well set up to get the bundle of balloons. I just need to fish up one more shiny red balloon. I'm not sure if I need three horseshoes, but all I know is that I'm extra motivated to survive these first 10 hours because this is literally the first time I have ever been in a position to make the bundle of balloons. Now I can be as motivated as I want, but I still found myself quite low on health around a marble biome when a hoplite later spawned and dropped the gladius. I mean, that's cool and all, but how could this thing possibly be useful to anyone? <laughs> I found a staff of regrowth, my final heart crystal, and then jumped into a mother slime several times and nearly got myself killed. And this brings me to the part of the show when all the gameplay is just fishing. I kid, although I did kill the Aya Cthulhu a second time so I could have enough Crimtain to make the flesh catcher. I did fishing quests and slime started raining from the sky so I figured this was the perfect opportunity to get King Slime to spawn for free and I combined that objective with finally exploring the last of the surface on the left side of the world. Yes, I still haven't done that. So I made my way over to the ocean, and upon arriving, King Slime awoke. There's King Slime. All right, I need to take this out of crimson. Oh, that actually did substantial damage. Hold up. No, 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 no. Hold up, King Slime can't kill me. Can't let this happen. He's actually posing a substantial threat right now. It's because he has his other slime friends here. And I have no arena. Stay up here and deal damage from far away till he decides to teleport again. Like that. Oh, I could have stayed up there. Rip. Uh oh. Mm. Holy cow! How am I almost dying to King Slime? Damage output is actually really high. Stay away. Don't get hit. Excellent. Extraordinarily cautious. This is not what I was expecting at all from this fight. Man, I'm loving the snowball cannon. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. Other slimes. Don't get carried away. <laughs> that was way closer than it should have been. That is embarrassing how close I came to dying to King Slime and it was quite humbling. I was feeling real strong and nearly invulnerable but the giant gelatinous mass nearly killing me brought me right back to earth and reminded me that Master Mode Hardcore is never to be taken lightly. This is when fishing did start to kick in. Sure, I can't get the Goblin Tinkerer, but I can at least get the shiny red balloon I need and be ready to craft the bundle of balloons the moment I can. And thus began the fishing at the Sky Islands. No one can stop me, I'm too strong when it comes to fishing kind. I'm gonna fish them all out of existence. I'm too strong of a fisherman. I cannot be stopped. No, 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 I cannot. Cause I'm a fisherman. A fisherman. No one can stop me. Watch me go. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> All right, drink. A few moments later. Just watch me go. I'll be a fish, a fisherman, the most fisherman of them all. I don't know where that came from, but you can expect the official Thorbin Fishing Song album to release in the near future. It, <laughs> it didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would, but I did get the shiny red balloon and an extra horseshoes. So I suppose if I do end up needing three horseshoes, I at least only need one more now. I then started a search for the Inklet of Wind and Boomstick, but ended up sidetracked as I found myself in the general area the Shimmer tends to be. I searched all over the place, but couldn't find the gosh darn thing, so I figured I'd reset by going home and beginning the bombing campaign. 
I just didn't have a good way of getting over there fast and figured I'd see if a teleportation potion just so happened to bring me to the right spot. Ha 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 Nope. And so the bombing commenced, and the thing is, I forgot I was blowing up the jungle. No, no! I panicked. I fled home as I was already losing health fast in the jungle. But now I'm outside the jungle, and there's no chance I can return to it without the enraged bee slaughtering me. I ran away, my mind racing for ways to make her despawn, and, well, there's only one method. To save and quit. And I honestly don't know how I feel about that. I hate combat logging to escape death, but at the same time, the point of this challenge is that certain bosses are locked right now, and that includes Queen Bee, so technically speaking, I'm not even allowed to kill her. Does that mean I just have to accept death? Can I combat log? I don't know. Let me know what you think, and if I run into a similar situation another time, I'll use the general consensus to decide whether I can combat log or not. Oh, and not five minutes later. You're kidding. I totally forgot water could break the larva. Oh, gosh darn it. Needless to say, the shimmer hunt it wasn't going well, and I returned home to reset and rethink my life, but then realized I didn't have an easy way back to the other side of the world, and figured this was the time to grab a conch. I just have to be extra careful with the rolling cactuses. But I got a star fury, so it should be fine. Oh! 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 oh. oh I didn't see the second one. Unfazed, I continued to explore and found the dumb snake flute thing. It's actually a neat little item, but I seldom find a use for it. The second chest, thankfully, had the conch, and I considered leaving, but then I thought, while I was here, I might as well find an ancient chisel. Maybe spending more time in the desert is a dumb idea, but I did it anyways, and it didn't take long to get the chisel either. Genuinely, some of the easiest desert exploration I've ever encountered. You know, ignoring that whole rolling cactus incident. <laughs> when I teleported home, it dawned on me, too, that I may never return to the underground desert. What other purpose could it possibly serve me? Especially since hard mode underground desert is nothing more than a death trap. Not long after that, a blood moon happened, which means it's time to farm for that lovely little money trap. But before that, I needed to grab Deathweed. I honestly don't remember the last time I actively sought out Deathweed. Usually, I just collect it when it just so happens to be available. A little farming later, and the money trough is mine. No bloody tears drop, which is too bad, but as the morning rolled around, I added three more houses and expanded the garden. I should probably also get back to finding the shimmer, but instead of searching the area I had been to before, I started blowing up a new tunnel. This one outside of the jungle. It ended up paying off as I found myself falling right into the shimmer, but even as I did, I was in disbelief. I didn't think they could spawn below the glowing moss. I have only ever seen them on the right or left of those things, so this threw me for a bit of a loop. The invisible enemies did that as well, and an invisible Shelly said hi as I was readying some housing. I shimmered the permabuffs, including Ambrosia, which I am always forgetting to get, as well as a couple extra magic mirrors, and then decorated the garden. At this point, this challenge is feeling a bit more like my one year challenge, and in many ways it is, it's just I'm incredibly stressed rather than relaxed, which is just great! I set up the jungle pylon, figured I should collect the ice skates for the eventual terrace Spark boots, and quickly retrieve those in the very first chest I came across. I am actually getting super, like actually stupidly lucky with my chest loot this run, and it's causing me to have to dream up more and more ideas for what to do as these farming and exploration sections are not taking the time I expect them to. Elevator is always nice, I guess, so I began mining. Watch this be a lava charm. Just watch. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. Alright. Lava charm. Here we come. Ah, uh, drug. But then, you know that super lucky chest luck thing? Well, not five minutes later. Oh, lava charm, I long to see you in a chest. There it is! Let's go! Now I just need the Obsidian Rose and the Goblin Tinkerer himself. It's just too bad the Obsidian Rose can't be found in a treasure chest as I'd probably get it in the very first one I looted. There was a very handy pool of lava and water for loads of obsidian, and I broke into the underworld in no time at all thanks to Scarab Bombs, the single best bomb in the game. Now one thing I am going to have to do is set up my house to be more mob-proof, and once I get the mechanic, that'll be much easier. It's just that right now, 
I don't have the mechanics, so I made a large secondary box around the house and filled it in with wall as well as prepared lava moats, but I'm not filling them until I get Terrace Bark boots. The next hour was filled with nothing but blowing up the area around the three separate crimson biomes on my world. This will prevent the spread to a degree in hard mode, but not entirely. The main problem is the underground crimson that'll spawn in hard mode, and when I separated that from the rest of the world on the year-long run, I died a whole bunch of times, so I don't expect I'll be doing that in this run. And if I do, it'll be considerably later than when I did it in the year-long run. But at least this can prevent extra spread and minimize the impact. It did cost me literally every cent I had, though, purchasing the dynamite necessary to do this, and I'm going to need more dynamite in the future. People always rag on the Goblin Tinkerer, but I'm pretty sure I put more money into the Demolitionist than any other NPC in Terraria. And now that I've spent all my money, I need to get more, and the best way I can think to do that is killing the Eye of Cthulhu. I got 10 eye summons and I made the arena better, especially since the platforms attached to the house might give mobs a place to spawn without falling into the lava trap I'm looking to make later. Five more eye kills and I had enough money to blow up the remaining area around the last crimson biome, but I purchased too much dynamite and needed more money, so the next night I consumed the last five eye summons I had on hand. Time has just about run out, and it'll be nice moving on to the next bosses, but I wanted to keep myself busy and thus went to the underworld to farm for an obsidian rose, the last accessory I need to craft the Terra Spark boots in the next 10 hours. First, I placed down some ash so more imps could spawn. First one, obsidian rose. Ah. I was curious if I'd get the demon scythe, and well, I did on the second demon, which I guess set the pattern for the rose as well. Just second demon! <laughs> Lucky Obsidian Rose, indeed. So I guess I'm not just lucky on chest loops. I, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> the farming was supposed to burn time, but no, I'm getting lucky, and I don't really want luck right now. <laughs> oh, classic Terraria RNG right there. I expanded the arena so it'd be suitable, theoretically, for the rest of the game. Maybe it'll need to be expanded in hard mode, but this will do for now. And just about the rest of my remaining half an hour was spent in the cavern layer fishing for enough cave fish to last the winter, but I think I was going a bit star crazy and was finding dumb ways to entertain myself. The way to entertain yourself when you're just... <laughs> ah, I'm missing it now. Hold on. No, 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 no. Hiya! Right as time is running out, there was a problem. The traveling merchant spawned and he was selling the bamboo leaf. This thing is key to my branding, but it costs a whopping platinum and I don't have a platinum. So I rushed to sell everything I could, even the special two golden carp I had put on display, but still was several gold short. I could potentially part with a few more things, but not without risking incurring a steep cost in the future. I sprinted back to the cavern fishing hole in the hopes of catching something expensive before night came and the traveling merchant departed. After some dedicated fishing, I sold what I could and was able to purchase the bamboo leaf with time and money to spare. Wow, what an exciting way to end the first 10 hours of Master <laughs> I genuinely think I gave myself too much time each month. I don't need 10 hours, but I guess that's what we're doing, so I'm stuck with it. <laughs> Assuming I survive uh, the next 10, that is. Um, and that episode will be right here when it releases next week. In the meantime, perhaps you'd like to check out the first time I ever beat Hardcore in Expert Mode right below it.